Hey, Drew. Richard, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Happy Good. Sunday. Same to you. Look at this. Look at this. Look beautiful. at this. What a beautiful morning, huh? Can't beat this. Awesome. Can't beat this. Nice offshore wind or no wind at all. Yep. And, uh, Looking forward to catching some snook out here. All right, good. So what do we got going on here today? We got a, uh, a, we got, a we got an assortment of flies here that I'm going to try to do today. But first, let me uh, kind of talk about the rigs that we've got going on here. This is a uh, you just moved here from Sarasota. Just moved here from Sarasota about a year ago. Um, now, did you, did you fish for snook along the beach there? So I did fish for snook along the beach there. It's it's a different type of uh, fishing on the west coast. Uh, usually in the morning you get the sun at your back right so you get a nice you get a, a, a very nice kind of uh, you know kind of fly fishing for uh, sight fishing is what I wanted to say in the stuff right there. yeah okay mostly on the west coast you get uh, sight fishing early in the morning where on the east coast you have to wait till the sun's up above your head for you to get that nice uh, sight fishing right off the beach during the time in the morning here you're probably going to do a lot more blind casting and you're going to shoot it parallel to the beach so you know we'll take what we can get at this point okay so tell me about the uh the rod so the rod here uh, is your standard for you know salt water on the on the east coast is about a nine weight i got a nine weight sage made by uh made by sage it's the salt edition i have a uh, nine weight reel with an intermediate fly line the fl intermediate fly line is uh, most fly lines that you see they float on top of the water right on the on the beach when you got waves you kind of want that fly line to sink underneath the waves so that you have a nice easy strip coming in where you can keep that slack at a minimum so the the intermediate is the uh, the weight the intermediate is not the weight it's the uh sinkability sink that's what i mean so yeah, yeah. It, usually there's floating there's sink tips there's full sinking there's fast sinking Intermediate, the whole entire line sinks at a desired meters per second. So this is the type of line that you want to use from the beach, especially when waves are crashing on the shore. Right now we got a little bit. This right here kind of, as if you can see, there's little rollers coming in. That's actually beneficial because it allows your fly to get that natural movement. All right, well, we'll walk down on the beach in a little while. And I'll you, show you, you exactly show what I'm talking about. I'll walk out in the water and you can... Yeah. So I got a few flies here to kind of show you exactly what we're fishing for. Now wait a minute, where'd you get these flies? I've made these flies myself. You made the, you made these flies? I do. You okay. know. Okay. Going home and playing with the kid for a little bit. You know, you kind of want to uh, kind of want to relax, and my relaxation is sitting down with the vise and putting some flies together. Tying flies. Well, I think that's an old timey relaxation it's, thing. It's, and the guys I, sit out there with a little bit of bourbon. It's the most <laughs> most therapeutic thing I can do. <laughs> Okay. So you want me? You want me to show you these? Yeah, yeah. All show right. them and hold here. them up here a little bit so we can see them. So this is this is a greenback minnow. Now I will say that I did not invent this fly. This fly was uh, is actually a staple to the old Florida fly shop down in Boca Grande. It's called Eat Me. As you can see, this looks like a very tasty little treat for a snook. <laughs> and would that work for tarpon? You said Boca Grande. So, uh, I'm sorry, Boca Raton. Oh, Boca the Raton. Old Florida okay. fly shop down in Boca Raton. Oh, okay. Now, uh, this next one is mimicking a pinfish. Right here. This one has a little bit more flash and flare to it. So this one is probably something I'm going to want to use in the morning when visibility is a little low. That'll get that attention of the snook. This is something you want to use more at the midday where the light is, uh, where you want to be a little bit more stealthy. This right here, okay, speaking of your tarpon, this is a mullet. During the mullet run, probably, you know, late August, early September, you will get, uh, you'll get the tarpon rolling by. And this is a phenomenal fly, blows for snook and tarpon. It's a little bit of our bigger fly, so, you know what the, kind of feathers are those these are chinese uh hackle so it's basically just like rooster tail this is rooster tail this is a little bit of flash this is deer belly hair so <laughs> underneath <laughs> the belly of a deer what you'll do is you'll tie that on you'll take a razor blade and you'll kind of trim the head uh -huh. and you'll just taper the hairs going back to the feathers oh, no it kidding. gives it that not that nice natural swimming motion and then this is another mullet imitation 
and this is just called your EP uh, bait fish fly. It's just basically a bunch of fibers and it you just kind of manipulate the fibers in a way of uh, kind of like a bait fish and you just cut it accordingly. Cool. But these well, are the four things... these are the four staple flies that I like to use off the beach. That's pretty much unbelievable. Well, uh, the best time to fish for snook is before the sun comes up and it's shining on us now. So why don't we grab the gear and head on down to the beach? Sounds good. Let's do it. Okay, so here's Drew down on the beach. Let's see what fly fishing is all about. I love coming over to the beach in the summer. It's so calm, the water's so warm. So there's gonna be some uh, wave noise here, but we don't have any wind, so it should be okay. And I see here's a bunch of glass minnows right here. And our friend up here with the video camera said there's a lot of sharks along the beach. That's not a good thing. Okay, so let me see here. You wanna tell me what you're up to? Yeah, so as, as you can see right now, the sun is right up here on the horizon. It's, it's, it's really hard to see. So that, that usually is the goal of snook fishing. It's, it's, it's purely sight-based, so that's the appeal of snook fishing off the beach is you can catch it right here right literally where the break happens on the beach uh, but since we've got the glare from the sun it makes it a little difficult so what you're gonna probably want to do mostly here is do a little bit more parallel fishing where you just want to increase your odds you right? you can cast straight out there and strip back in but you're only covering this distance right and I told you they like to eat right here off of the Right here, right off, the, right off the beach, literally right off the beach. So I will just kind of get my feet in the water and throw parallel to the shore. I'll increase my chance of a bite. So here's a little update for you from, from the East Coast. From the the East Coast. sand fleas are being washed off into this trough, and the croakers are running along in the trough to eat the sand fleas and the croakers are without a doubt the snook's favorite meal. So sometimes so, what I like to do is when I'm stripping, I like to walk back a little bit. Is, is that what, keep that nice tension on the line. Is that what you're doing there? That's called stripping? This, this is, I'm stripping right now. Now there's different, different techniques to a strip. I recommend just, you know, having two to three different types where you try them out for about three or four minutes and you switch it up. Sometimes you can do fast, fast little pops like that, or you could do long strips, pause, long strip, pause, or if you really want to make that fly look like he's running away from a predator, wow. you tuck it up underneath your arm, and you go like this. Whoops. kind of get a little over and over and then you just kind of work your way down the beach. And I usually just work my way down the beach until I kind of start getting a nice little view of the, or let me rephrase that, when the glare goes away, I then step back. So when you're sight fishing, you want to step far back. You don't want the snook to see you. So you want your shadow at your back and you want to stand about 15, 20 feet ahead. When you see them, you will see them right here. When you spot them, you got to pause, gain your composure, don't freak out, but you're going to want to move ahead about 20 feet. When you move ahead about 20 feet, you'll see them kind of making their way down. You will then throw your fly a little past where they are. And this is where I told you earlier that a little bit of wave movement is actually beneficial to you. So as you're throwing your fly and you're trying to bring it to the shore and the snook is coming at the same time, you're sweeping the fly across their face so that they see it. And this wave right here sometimes, I know it's kind of hard to see, 
but that little bit of movement with the water gives that fly a very natural presentation. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Right. And yeah. I'm not doing anything. So yeah. that's you know, the less you have to do in that regard, that's one one benefit to having the wave to your advantage here. Okay, well, you say you've been here a year. Where's your favorite spot to fish, right here? To be determined. <laughs> to be determined, okay. okay. Uh, but yes, anywhere that you have a nice sandy bottom, now there's rocks up here, there's rocks down there, and that can help you. But from the standpoint of you want nice kind of sandy, clear water beach. So anywhere from Juno all the way down to Hobe Sound and even Sebastian Inlet in the whole the whole east coast and that from here all the way two hours north you can you can be pretty productive. Okay now you didn't mention tippets to me. Yes. What do we got going on well, this, here? This is kind of, this is important. So in uh, for your leader I like to have about a, you know, about a eight foot, nine foot liter. Tapers down to about 16, 16 pounds. And then I like to tie on about a 30 pound bit of about, you know, a foot and a half liter of fluorocarbon right here. And then the fly, you want your fly usually to be about a white, kind of like a, as much, as translucent as possible. And you got your 30 pound shock tippet. Your white fly and that right there should should produce should produce okay now we got a loop here we tell, do. tell me about this loop it's it's a loop knot and i like to tie loop knots uh the main reason i like to tie them instead of straight onto the eye of the hook is it gives it its kind of natural presentation okay it kind of gives that that natural motion when it's in the water it swims more like a fish okay so i'm just increasing my odds ever more <laughs> and landing them yeah okay by that and that little loop knot that's beautiful cool i'll try not to hook you here that's all right try not to am i in your way no nope, you're good okay so you're gonna tell me the story but don't get too far from me <clears throat> Okay, so tell me the rest of the story about that fly dad. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to reach me on Instagram, my account is that underscore fly underscore dad. I am your weekend warrior version of the fly fisherman, so I, 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 I like to say I'm on a uh, drinking team with the fly fishing problem. <laughs> Joke, all jokes aside, I, uh, I, I love fly fishing and I love to teach the youth, so. So any kids out there that they want to um, you want to pick up the fly rod and learn something different or just improve on their skills or just just get out there and enjoy nature and I'll tell you the one thing about fly fishing that I love is you can go out there you can cast the rod all day long and and not catch anything and have a blast. Uh, my wife make, likes to make fun of me she goes so how was it? I go oh it was amazing. Because how many fish did you catch? I go, I didn't catch anything. <laughs> well, the good side to that is you don't have any fish to clean. Well, that too. <laughs> now, do you have any kids? I, I've got one kid. His name's Braxton. He's a three-year-old. Okay. Uh, still a little too young to get out here. Okay. That, that being said, I'll take a backpack, I'll put him on my back, and we'll walk the beach together. Oh, no kidding. That's and, fabulous. Uh, so we got that fly dad on Instagram. That fly dad on Instagram. And That's so if somebody wanted to go fly fishing with you or take their son out and yeah, just, teach just, him how, just DM you on. Just DM me on Instagram and, uh, you know, usually we'll set up a time during the weekends. I uh, work during the weeks, unfortunately. But. Uh, yeah, that's always a trouble with work. That's yeah, always a trouble. But, uh, yeah. I, thank you guys so much for uh, kind of tuning me in. And uh, let's see if we can catch some snook. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, Thank you, Drew. Appreciate and we'll it. back up and let you go back to business. Thank you.
Okay, so that's uh, snook fishing along the beach here, fly fishing with Drew. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. We got some other videos on snook fishing. If you look on my channel, you'll see uh, five top places to snook fish. In Jupiter, it's not fly fishing like this, but it's the places. I've been fishing here for 32 years and it's my favorite spots. And there's a playlist uh, on Jupiter life and underwater and stuff you might enjoy. So take a look. Be sure and subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And until the next video, have a great day.